Manchester United have got a new left back, or at least cover left back, in the absence of Luke Shaw. And 36 hours ago, that was Cucurella. That was the only name that was on anybody's lips. And in the last 36 hours or so, that's all changed because Cucurella requires um, some sort of a break clause from the United side uh, that isn't possible either from him or from the Chelsea side. So United have switched our focus and our attention and Sergio Reguilon has become the name that United are now going for. Um, Still a Spurs player. Spent last season at Atletico Madrid. Uh, I'll get into the reports and I'll give you my thoughts on maybe why we've gone for him and if I think it's a good idea or not. So um, Romano and Ornstein... Basically, Romano parroting Ornstein saying this is now what's happening. Uh, Cucurella deal collapsed because United want to terminate in January. Not possible uh, with Cucurella. So we switched our attention to Tottenham left-back uh, Sergio Reguilon amid doubts over the loan deal with Cucurella. Um, Cucurella obviously starred in the League Cup win over Wimbledon on Wednesday, um, but is not now United's preferred choice. Uh, he was, uh, but that release clause is massive to United for, for whatever reason. Clearly, we just want cover for Luke Shaw. That's obvious what we're here to do. Uh, but because he's already played for Chelsea, he can't be transferred to a third club this season. So that means that if United take him, then the chances are he's just going to sit out for six months and he's not going to play elsewhere. Um, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense on his part. Um, United apparently tried to sign Regulon a few seasons ago, but opted for Tellers instead. That's interesting. Uh, he was obviously most recently loaned to Atletico Madrid. He made 11 La Liga appearances, um, having failed to nail, nail down a consistent starting place since he was at Spurs. Now, from a tactical point of view... Um, Regulon's going to give you a fair bit more in possession than defensively. I think that's why he's been chosen. He is a good passer of the ball. He is a good crosser of the ball. And weirdly, almost in a Dennis Irwin mould, he's ambidextrous. Uh, That being that he can cross with his right and with his left. With his left, he seems to just whip him in. uh, And there's a little bit of a fizz on him. And when he crosses with his left, he puts him into an area... I'll be honest, I didn't really watch him in the league last year. This is going back from what I saw with him playing with Harry Kane when he was at Spurs. And he was genuinely good at Spurs. I don't quite know why it went west for him because he was a good player at Spurs. Any, anybody know? Anyone know what the, the reason behind any of that was? Because I, I honestly am struggling to figure out why all that happened. But anyway, when he crossed with his left, he would get into really advanced positions and he would cross and he would put the ball into the feet of Harry Kane quite well and quite regularly as well. And, and I thought... That was a massive, massive asset that I understand United's probably looking for that sort of a need to help us score some more goals. Interestingly, Regulon, though, when you're coming up against him as an opposition fullback or as an opposition midfielder, maybe trying to slow him down, um, you obviously don't want to show him on his left foot because that's what he wants to do to try and get beyond you and get a cross in. But you also don't want to show him on his right foot either because he's got a cross on him. Now, if I had to describe what that cross was like, it's the, the, the level isn't the same and the, the accuracy isn't quite the same, but the style is the same, and that is Ashley Young's crosses to the back stick. When he comes in on his right foot, he's putting it in a zone. He's not putting it like pinpoint accuracy like he, he does do when, when he's got a left foot cross. He sort of sticks it into an area. And I don't necessarily mind that. Um, it's a bit of an option for him if he can't go on his left foot. And having a a dual threat fullback that can cross the ball isn't a bad thing. Now, when you talk about what he's like as a uh, defender, obviously being a fullback, you've got to be able to defend. 1v1 is pretty good. I I remember him having um, pretty good composure, pretty good tenacity, and being able to, to jockey a winger. What I can't remember, uh, and I'll watch some more videos this week before we do a How He Fits In, because I'm sure that's coming. Um, If I can get a signal down here, because the signal is shocking. (laughs) Um, I can't remember what he's like defending the back stick. I can't remember what he's like as crosses coming from the opposite side. That's the sort of stuff that you have to really watch someone with a purpose to, to sort of figure out. But I do remember watching wingers go up against him and struggle. uh, And I do remember him being quite tenacious when he defended. So these are from memory, not from research. uh, But I'll have to watch and and figure out what he's going to be like if he's... You know, he could be a Wamba Saka with a cross. 
No, but there's still six, seven other aspects of defending that you've got to be able to pull in. Is is he slow out the line? You know, all all sorts of things like that. You know, do, is he facing his own goal too much when he's defending it? Does he get his hips right and and all that sort of stuff? So those are the things that I don't I don't know the answer to off the top of my head. Uh, but like I said, from what I can remember, he was really good at Spurs. Don't know why it went west for him at Spurs. Um, obviously, we played against him. I think we played against him, didn't we? In he was definitely a severe. I'm pretty sure it was the year that they beat us in the Champions League final. Um, I think there's a player there. Uh, and as backup, which is what he will be, I assume Luke Shaw is going to be out for a minute now, looking at why we've decided to bring somebody in. Um, I, yeah, I'm all right with it. He's a good age. He's not going to upset the apple cart too much. But this can't be it. What's going on with Amrabat? Where's he? You know, United have... Uh, you can't just patch up nonsense when you get an injury. Oh, we'll stick a loan sticker on it and it'll be fine. No, that's not how it works. You need to go and start assembling a squad that is capable of going challenging for the title, and you're not doing that. No, and that's not aimed at Eric Ten Hag. That's aimed at those above him. That's the board. Eric Ten Hag, I'm sure, would have had all of these players and more through the door. Every manager's greedy. They want... 47 players in the first team. So they want what Chelsea are getting at the moment. And by the way, what absolute fucking mayhem is going on. How is this legal? How are they not getting sanctioned to fuck? How are the Premier League going, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. What are you doing? You're clearly about to break the rules. Like, surely as everybody can see this, isn't somebody saying, excuse me, sir, how is this legal? Manchester United are hamstrung by FFP. With the caveat that you can have owner money put into the club, which our owners were never going to do, so get that out of your head. And you can still lose a little bit of money if you do that. However, Chelsea are going turbo. Is it like 1.6 billion spent since like last summer? It's an unfathomable amount of money that Chelsea are spending. People think United spend a lot, right? You know, Arsenal have outspent us in recent years. City have just won a treble and outspent us. United's squad needs a whole retooling. The only thing we're good at is buying a new fucking third-choice goalkeeper every single summer. We do that without... A, no one better in the world than that than us. No one better. You want a third-choice... We'll go and get a third-choice goalkeeper. Watch this shit. Every summer, without fail. You want us to actually buy first-team players that are going to play week in, week out. Yeah, we don't do that around here. Concentrate on other stuff. That's not what we do around here, obviously. Manchester City have just going to spend £200 million on top of a team that has just won the fucking lot. Meanwhile, we don't have a midfielder that can partner Casemiro. And we're trying to get one in on loan for two fucking million. Talk about taking the piss. But that needs to happen next. Because it's all right having a left-back you got no midfielder in shit. I'd argue a midfielder's more important than a left-back. But here we are, trying to sign another fucking left-back. Sound. Oh, by the way, you just let Brandon Williams go. He'd have done you for cover, surely. What's going on with Alvaro Fernandez? He's sitting there going, shit, I'm a left-back. You'd rather get this guy in London. Give me a fucking chance. Nice one, lads. Cheers, appreciate that. you got Delo, who can play left-back or right-back. He's not good enough. All right, cool, okay. Wow. Make it make sense, because it don't make sense. Give us your thoughts on regular in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.